Right now I'm straining my lye water into my bucket of melted oils and then I'm, I'm going to blend just until emulsification or a little bit past emulsification. The recipe today or the technique today we need a, a pretty fluid batter. So the essential oils I just added were spearmint, eucalyptus, rosemary and patchouli and is absolutely amazing in scent. I love it. And so now I'm dividing my batter into my six different colors. I have a little bit of white Brazilian clay there and it didn't really change my color too much but changed it a little bit. I have spirulina, charcoal, some rose clay and then some cocoa powder that I'm using for my colorants today. I think I had poured a little heavy-handed um, with my colorants. I used about two teaspoons of each colorant to about one and a half tablespoons of canola oil and mixed in those colorants with the oil prior to adding the soap batter. And I think I may have added too much in retrospect. For this kiss design, I need to pour two containers of alternating soap. So I'm doing the basic Clyde slide and pouring alternating pictures or alternating colors down the sides of the pitcher. And at this point I'm realizing that my batter is thickening up a little more than I would have wanted it to or quicker than I would have wanted it to. So I'm trying to pour simultaneously because if I were to pour one um, bucket or one pitcher and then I move on and do my other pitcher, the one that's sitting would firm up quite a bit more than the one that I would be pouring because I would be stirring it as shown prior to, to pouring it. So it, it, they would be totally different in texture and thickness. So I'm trying to pour both of them kind of at the same time so that when I do the pour it into my mold, it's going to be about the same type of fluid fluidity. And now for the fun part of pouring it into my mold. I'm going to be taking both pitchers and like kissing them together and so that they're pouring at the same time. And I'm pouring right down the center of, into the center of my mold. You could pour in different locations or even have a traveling kissing pour where you travel it around your slab mold. I didn't want to do that because I was afraid of muddling my cut, mud, mudding my colors up because as you can see as I'm pouring my batter is really thick and almost kind of chunky. I was kind of surprised by this because my recipe was good, my soaping temperature was nice and cool but not too cool, my essential oils, I've worked with them a lot and they all behave well in the past. So I'm not quite exactly sure what happened. I'm thinking maybe um, I mixed just a little less than normal. It was emulsified but maybe not as much as I normally would have mixed it. And then I just take a skewer and just on the surface of the soap, just kind of make that look a little um, better. My soap was pretty soft and spongy. So I, this was like two days later after I poured it. Um, it did not go through gel phase, which I normally am not used to. I normally gel everything. So that was a little bit of a difference. So my soap is kind of sticky and mushy on the edges. So I'm being very careful as I cut. I'm basically just cutting my slab into three different loaves.
The planing of the soap was probably the most fun thing to do because you go from a muddled kind of soda ash top and you just kind of slice off the, the top layer and it reveals below it a pretty sharp contrasted difference in color, a pretty distinct pattern, and I consider that a good success. Once I'm done shaving or planing this soap, I just planed the top, I did not plane on the bottom. I don't have a planer, so I was just using as shown, and it was, anyway. And then when I beveled the corners, I did that with a carrot or vegetable peeler just along the edges. I did not film that, but that's how I did that. <laughs> 